apply it now to the Euro Cup um, playoffs. But let's jump into the match. I believe we're watching this from Flavio's perspective. So Flavio bringing the Cinderace, Toxtricity, Drifblim, Tyranitar, Rillaboom, and Urshifu. Few Pokemon in there, unsurprising to most, but I love seeing that Drifblim in there. But he's going to be against Felix's Rotom Wash, Incineroar, Togekiss, Dragapult, Excadrill, and Amoongus. Yep, and that's kind of one of the things we talked about before the game, is that Italy love to use Urshifu, and we see it right there in the sixth slot <laughs> on Flavio's team. Um, could be a good time for Urshifu, you know, if it gets to face off against things like the Dragapult, things like the Excadrill. It's going to be feeling good, but it does have to, of course, worry about something like the Togekiss or, or being caught with redirection from Amoongus. Mm. Um, a couple of things I think are cool on Flavio's team. The Drift Blim, as you mentioned, obviously there. You can see it holding the seed ready to, uh, you know, activate that in the terrain, get its boost, uh, which is kind of weird because it's not actually touching the ground. Um, but it mm. still gets the boost from the seed by just being around in the in the terrain. And then it gets the Unburden and, and goes from there. Um, I also think Toxtricity could be interesting, uh, especially, you know, if you're trying to pair it off with the Urshifu and say, okay, well, the only things I can't deal with are Togekiss. Uh, I'll, I'll just bring Toxtricity to deal with that. So a lot of answers here, I think, from Flavio's side to what Felix wants to bring. I think he has mm -hmm. uh, something very strong to answer everything, even though I think Felix's team just pairs and, and works together really well. Well, the players taking their time going down to the last couple of seconds there with their choices. It's definitely, like you said, Adam, so many different options for these players to be able to bring, and they need to make sure that in this turn zero, they have called it correctly. Felix leading out with Amoongus and Togekiss, an unlikely pairing, both redirectional Pokemon on the field at the moment, but it does give room for some spores to come out from that Amoongus into the Drift Blim that has led out from Flavio paired up with that Rillaboom. So really good leads actually here from Felix with the... Togekiss being able to counter the Rillaboom quite effectively. Yep, Togekiss counters the Rillaboom and, and definitely helps out there. That said, Drifblim did activate its Grassy Seed. Uh, I was not 100% sure, but obviously the pairing off mm -hmm. with the Rillaboom confirms that one. There's the Unburdened ability as well. And now this could be certainly problematic for something like that Amoongus, right? You know, Acrobatics yes. is going to be really hurting. Uh, the the Rillaboom can can kind of not be too bothered uh, mm -hmm. because if the Togekiss is, is spending all that time dealing with it, um, you know, you can't put the Rillaboom to sleep either. So we'll see uh, how they decide to go. Oh, Fake Out. I didn't, yeah. didn't know if I was expecting that one. No, well, Fake Out could have stopped any potential spores coming out here. Um, as Yawn comes out, though, from the Togekiss going straight into that Drift Blim. So if Flavio had decided to Dynamax that Pokemon, which you could easily suspect if you were Felix, um, that would have definitely put a little timer um, onto the Drift Blim. But, I mean, Flavio has the options here with the Synergy. If you did Dynamax that Drift Blim, you can go for the Max Phantasms, lower the defense, and allow Rillaboom to deal some really detrimental damage uh, with any of its physical-type moves. But that Yawn really does change things. Yeah, the Yawn means that that uh, Grassy Seed boost, Unburden boost, is really easy to remove. And that's why I was a little shocked to see Fake Out go towards the Amoongus, to be honest. You know, you had the access to something to to at least put big damage down on the Amoongus. Uh, I'm assuming mm. Acrobatics from the Drift Blim. And, you know, to see that the Togekiss allowed to Yawn, a problem that we, we know can be an issue, speaking oh. of which, there's another issue on the field, uh, was, was definitely big. Yeah, Hypnosis coming out from Driflim into Togekiss. So lots of sleep potential going to be here. Of course, Driflim will fall asleep at the end of this turn, thanks to the Yawn. Um, but it looks like, that was, was that a taunt going into the Amoongus? Yep, that was a, a provocation uh, heading Ooh. towards the Amoongus. That said, Amoongus knows about that threat, lands a sludge bomb on the Rillaboom, so a lot of damage going back there. Uh, but, you know, at the end of this turn, it's it's kind of just Rillaboom versus Amoongus now, as, as both <laughs> Togekiss and Driflim go to sleep, so interesting yeah. to see both trainers relying on sleep there yeah i agree and in that matchup between rillaboom and amoongus the, the little mushroom is going to come out superior with those sludge bombs yeah i mean if, if that's how much damage you're doing uh just right off the bat i mean it's something that not every every amoongus carries now right it's something that mm. you know people only only recently kind of considered and I, you know i've seen a lot of different moves that's with rage powder spore and, and then another grass kind of attacking move so i like that adaptation and i think it's important to understand that you're going to see something like a lot of Rillaboom. You can't spore it, so why would you not have something to deal with it? 
Yeah, well, Flavio making a good adjustment here, bringing in the Cinderace Pokemon that has so much versatility. Um, but Felix quite wisely bringing in that Incineroar as well, knowing the Amoongus can't do too much of the situation. You know, Driftblim's already asleep, and um, the Rillaboom isn't going to be threatened by any sleep. And Flavio is likely going to make up that change, bringing in the Intimidate against the Cinderace. It is gonna, could be critical here. Both Pokemon, though, that are asleep, obviously taking their little naps in this first turn. And now Flavio has the option to Dynamax with that potential Cinderace. Yep, I mean... The Cinderace is, is there to be able to to try and get some damage down, right? That's kind of the big problem now is we've spent a number of turns not getting much damage down from Flavio's side uh, with things sleeping and getting faked out and, and taunted and such. So he does need to start dealing damage. I think that's going to be kind of the, the big decision for him here is when can he safely Dynamax? It looks like he's, he's umming and ahhing over something now, uh, but... You know, if Cinderace does Dynamax and then Togekiss wakes up and, and lands something like a Yawn on it, it could be a, a really bad Dynamax. And I think it might be safer to clear the way of the Togekiss to, to start with. Yeah, taking that attack drop will be problematic for the Cinderace. Um, Amoongus going to jump straight back onto the field. Uh, Incineroar not really going to have been in a position to deal too much damage. I think critically you need that Incineroar in the back for more Intimidates in the future of your Felix. So quite a wise switch out there. And of course Amoongus sometimes doesn't fall victim to something like a Max Airstream. Um, can apply some pressure to the Cinderace with something like a Spore or even just redirect away from Togekiss. Like you said, Togekiss can wake up and go for a Yawn. That can really put Felix back in the driving seat. But Cinderace going to Dino or Gigantamax up first of all as Drifflim goes for another Hypnosis here. Does not actually manage to get it connected as the Cinderace will change thanks to its new barrier ability. And it looks like it was changing into the Steel type to target down a Max Steel type based off Iron Head into that Togekiss. Uh, but you can really see the Intimidate drop there paying off. Yep. And I I think this Intimidate drop could become a bit of a problem overall, right, is mm -hmm. what may happen here is, is Felix just has the option to, to constantly switch Amoongus and Incineroar around, right? And yeah. the problem is you have to call that so perfectly, you don't have to do it every turn. We saw on the kind of team preview side that we get from Flavio's point of view, he was umming and ahhing over the Max Knuckle, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem is like Max Knuckle's great into Incineroar, you make up for that Intimidate drop, but if Togekiss redirects, if Amoongus is in place, you, you don't get anything out of it. And there's, I think, a lot of pressure now on Flavio to start making these calls correctly uh, and yeah. finding kind of an opening where he can deal some huge damage and, and get himself into an advantage. But well, he's gained a little bit more information as well. You know, the Babiri Berry on that Togekiss also helping out against the Max Steel Spike. Um, so another one of those very likely to pick up the KO. But as you mentioned before, Togekiss could switch and that Incineroar would come in and it looks like it's exactly the move that Felix has gone for. But I didn't quite clock what Flavio has gone for, whether he maybe has targeted this correctly and gone for that Max Knuckle um, to bring his... It would be his attack back up to minus one as it's now at minus two. Uh, but in that Dynamax, when you have the utility of those secondary effects, you might as well use them for all they're worth. Amoongus going for the Protect them in case there was a Max Airstream coming his way. As Driflam goes for the Hypnosis here, um, it's going to connect onto the Protect of the Little Mushroom. And once again, Felix playing really, really difficult defensively here. It was the Max Steel Spike going into the Cinderella and you can just see the very slither of damage that comes out from here and Felix is making really good work here of burning through the Dynamax turns of Flavio. He's burning through the turns and he's constantly lowering the Cinderace's attack. The Cinderace really needs to weave in a Max Knuckle at some point and really it's only got next turn to do it but it's got to be careful. It's got to be smart about when it decides to Max Knuckle to actually get some damage down of course. Amoongus still has the option to, to just redirect it for this turn. Uh, so he may just be forced to, to play the rest of the game with the Cinderace kind of stuck in either minus two or forced to switch out at some point. I think that, that's really key for him here is to, to at least get something out mm. of these Dynamax turns. Because right now it really looks like he's struggling and, and he doesn't have a super clear answer. I mean, he's just fishing for Hypnosis with this Drift Blim. Uh, decided to switch off that though as soon as I say it, of course. Yeah, goes for the Icy Wind here on this occasion, going to connect on both the Pokemon there and lower the speed a smidge um, to help out later on in the endgame here. But of course, Felix does still have access to his Dynamax, now something that Flavio has to worry about in these ne next couple of turns. Um, the Cinderace is going to change up, go for the Fire type back to its original typing um, and go straight into that. Amoongus does some really, really big damage and picks up the KO, removes that pesky mushroom from play. Yep, and I think that's probably something that was really important there. I'm glad he was able to do it. Uh, even at minus two, uh, 
this Cinderace is going to be pretty much useless after this point. <laughs> uh, the parting shot there from Incineroar has now dropped its attack and special attack. So it's now at minus three attack. And I don't know if he's going to do it. I do like when people make this play. But he could end up at minus four absolutely <laughs> immediately after. Yeah, bringing that Incineroar back into that free slot created by Amoongus will cause more trouble for that Cinderace. And I think in the Battle of the Fire types, Incineroar is really putting in the work. It hasn't dealt any damage, really. It's just come in, had that pressure of Fake Out, had the Intimidate <laughs> being utilized so well. You see it jump right back in here like, hey, surprise, I'm back. Here's another Intimidate coming your way. And like you said, the Cinderace is now just looking to be in a really bad position. It's not going to be the powerhouse that Flavio needs it to be. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a four stages of reduced attack. It's going to be absolutely tickling. Um, Felix playing, you know, something that a lot of people would look at and call a standard team, but he's playing it to the absolute fullest, right? He's forcing his opponents to play a certain way. Uh, he's getting certain kind of plays that he wants, and he just needs to be able to take a little more advantage of them. Uh, that said, the Driftloom is still on the field. The Driftloom from turn number one with its boosted defense, with its boosted... Oh, it doesn't have a boost to speed. Oh, it does. does no, I mean, yeah, it, it's got the unburden boosting it up, but yeah, it was the, the seed that gave it the defense boost. Yeah, so defense boost, and it's got the defense boost from Max Steel Spike too. So oh, yeah, that's true. You do need to hit it with, with some kind of special attack. Uh, that said, I mean, Dragapult's still definitely something that can deal with it, and I'm just not sure if, if Drifloom is going to be enough. Yeah, Driftloom is going to have to put in some work if it wants to go down against this Dragapult, but this is where saving your Dynamax can be so critical. Felix keeping it till the end here, and now Dragapult does look to be in a really reasonable position here. It's a speedy Pokemon. It can deal out some big pressure damage. It doesn't have to worry about anything coming out from the Cinderace, but it does have to worry about potential hypnosis from that unburdened um, Driftloom. It does manage to avoid though, so Driftloom is going to take a Max Phantasm, but it looks like this defense boost is really helping out the Driftblim here, able to survive. Won't be able to survive another one though, so it will have another opportunity to go for a Hypnosis, but all dependent on that Togekiss, whether it wakes up and can redirect. Cinderace is going to change up its ability once again, thanks to Libero, and go straight into that Togekiss. That looked like it was a high jump kick. It was a high jump kick, and uh, that's certainly not the, the premium <laughs> option against the Togekiss. I see what he was going for, try and land it on the Incineroar, but uh, that's but... that's not the one, Chief. I'm going to put it that way. That's, <laughs> that's not the damage you want to see going down. And, and he's just getting frustrated, I think. I mean, I would be if I was in Flavius position, right? Just mm -hmm. getting annoyed by this constant switching out. This Cinderace, even if that wasn't full full damage, still wouldn't be doing much damage. So just get it out of there. Get, get a reset onto those stats. Yeah, I mean, that Incineroar is really playing games with Flavio right now. It's being so cheeky, switching in, switching out. Now you see me, now you don't. And those kind of mind games can really throw a player in it. I think you're right, Flavio would quite rightly be getting frustrated in this situation where he's just not able to take down that Incineroar and it's still there. It's still threatening those Intimidates. Does manage to reset them on the Cinderace, so Cinderace will be back in action later on in the game. Riddaboom will join the field here as Togekiss switches out. And, oh, wait, what's that? Incineroar is back once again to intimidate another turn in this match, this time going to get down onto that Rillaboom. Yep, the Rillaboom is now going to be struggling a little bit, right? The Rillaboom mm -hmm. is something that relies on that big attack. And honestly, I think the Rillaboom could probably be sacked off. Uh, I don't know if it really has much to do in this matchup, uh, just because of the Pokemon it's, it's facing down. So uh, it looks like it was a Tailwind, actually, from the... Yeah from the Drift Blim, so no use of something like the Acrobatics there. Uh, definitely yeah. trying to set up for late game, uh, but not what you usually see from, from a Drift Blim. No, I feel like with Flavio, it, it made sense though, because the Max Phantasm was going to take down the Drift Blim at the end of that turn anyway. And yes, you could have gone for a Hypnosis, but they've been kind of missing. You might have lost faith in them. And if the Togekiss has stayed on the field, woken up and redirected, then Dragapult is still a really offensive threat. Going for the Tailwind enables uh, the Urshifu that's coming here from the back and the Rillaboom to have that little bit of extra speed that might be the advantage he needs to take down these Pokemon remaining for Felix. Yep, I think that's something that he saw there and realized that, hey, my win condition is Urshifu. I need Urshifu to be able to hit this Dragapult, uh, so I'm going to need a Tailwind. And I think that's probably overall the right play, uh, but uh -huh. it's just strange to see. That's, I mean, as somebody who's uh, not a self-professed expert in Drift Blim, not used it in quite some time. Uh, you always think I'm bird and acrobatic shenanigans, but you know, there's certainly opportunities for, for something new. Um, mm -hmm. I'll see how much damage this 
you know, this Urshifu can do to Dragapult, because I think that's going to be really important. Well, once again, Felix withdraws the Incineroar, going to bring the Intimidate back onto both of these physical attackers later on. Um, so Felix really identifying how he can work his way through Flavio's team here. Dragapult going to go for that Protect. Oh, a max guard as Togekiss takes I think that was a fake out coming out there. My Italian is improving with every turn. Um, but it looks like in this particular turn, it was quite a sort of stalemate here. No damage really was dealt out on the board unless you were um, that Togekiss. And I think I really like to play it from Felix being able to have the Intimidate in the back to Intimidate once again and apply pressure um, so that both Rillaboom and the Urshifu can't deal as much damage as Flavio would like. And honestly, this, this Togekiss and Cineroar Amoongus has been just so frustrating, I think, for for Flavio to deal with, right? He's always got to guess what's coming in. Yes, he got rid of the uh, Moongus quite early, and that was definitely helpful, but uh, apart from that, it, it's been a little bit, a little bit of a struggle, mm -hmm. I think, to get through. And, and now that the Dragapult's done with its Dynamax, now you really need to find an opening with this Urshifu to get the damage down. Uh, but that said, I mean, the, the Dragapult's still very, very healthy. He just needs to kind of get through the turn to Tailwind, I think. Yeah, and I think it's wise retreating your Dragapult here, like you said, trying to get through those turns of Tailwind. You want to make sure Dragapult is going to be the fastest thing on the field to preserve it for when it's going to be most effective. And while you're doing that, you can also catch a break by bringing in Incineroar to fire off that Intimidate. Um, so really, really well played here by Felix. And I'm very impressed Togekiss is still on the field, to be honest, after being put to sleep so early on. Wicker Blow, they're going to come out, get that critical hit. And even though it's not very effective, it still deals a really decent chunk to the Togekiss. Rillaboom going to fire up with a Wood Hammer as well. It's not enough to pick up the KO though, but I really did see what Flavio was trying to do here. Remove Togekiss from the field so that Felix doesn't have the switching utility. He can't bring in that Incineroar anymore and Dragapult has to stay on the field, but Togekiss manages to wake up. So this actually really was unfortunate for Flavio. Doesn't manage to KO the Togekiss. It's here to hang around and redirect in this next turn. But I think critically gets off that Dazzling Gleam, takes down his urge to the focus, slash good information for Felix going into the next game and get some good chip on Rillaboom. I don't think what's important here is, you know, that was the right play from Flavio. To double target the Togo Kiss was, was absolutely the correct play there. You needed it gone, you needed it removed from the field, and falling short is a huge problem because he takes that dazzling gleam. Uh, that's obviously a massive issue for this Urshifu, which is one of the reasons mm -hmm. I think not every player has jumped right on it and is still kind yeah. of experimenting with it. So really kind of smart play there by Felix. The Incineroar, obviously the switch in there, really helping out and uh, putting him in a, a better position to get through the, the tail end of this game. But Flavio, you know, he's, he's kind of got everything he wanted, but, but still feels a, a little bit behind the pace, just struggling with this defensive wall that, that Felix has thrown up in front of him. Well, Felix course, has options with Fake Out now going forward into this, so brings in the Cinderace um, just to preserve the Rillaboom, reset those Intimidates, and Felix making a change of his own as well, knowing that Togekiss could be critical later on um, with some kind of redirection. Urshifu going to just detect, though, maybe doesn't want to take the Fake Out potential coming out from that Incineroar. Um, as Flare Blitz comes out, targets into what was the Rillaboom, so once again, a good switch here by Flavio, bringing in the Cinderace, which can, again, apply a lot of pressure, something like a high jump kick into that Incineroar will be dealing really, really good damage. It's coming unintimidated. And even if Togekiss comes in for that Incinerate, um, Incineroar, then it's a such low health, the high jump kick will be able to pick up the KO. Yeah, I mean, if the Incineroar can get knocked out, that gives the Urshifu complete freedom to, to target down the Dragapult. Like you said, the the switch in on, on something like the, the Togekiss is probably not safe just because of how low health it is. Uh, so there's a lot that could go right and a lot that could go wrong for Flavio here. I think mm -hmm. if all his attacks hit good targets, he wins. If Felix manages to keep this defensive mind game going and switch it around, maybe a high jump kick misses then, then he loses. So it's really up to Flavio to make the right calls, to not fall for any tricks or traps mm -hmm. that Felix may lay for him. And uh, it's really, really going to be close. No switching. Uh, there's the Sucker Ooh. Punch, that's going to be falling a little bit short of the damage required. And this Dragon Darts could just wrap it up. Oh, Cinderace able to hang on. Urshifu not so lucky though, will be KO'd by the little Dreepy in action here. Leaving Flavio down to his last two Pokemon. Um, Dragapult going to do a little bit of recoil there. Cinderace does go, I think this is the high jump kick. 
I want to yeah. say, yes, I'm going to go straight into that Incineroar and does manage to pick up the KO. So really good there being able to remove that Incineroar. I bet Flavio felt relieved and happy to be able to do that. But at the sacrifice of the Cinderace, so actually we're just going to have a Rillaboom coming back onto the field here. Yep, and Rillaboom is, is probably not going to be uh, quite what you wanted. Yeah, gets control of the terrain back. Uh, but I really don't see a world where, where Rillaboom can deal with this Dragapult in its entirety. And, and this game really shown off to be why the, the defense has been so good for Felix. Mm -hmm. uh, Togekiss also takes the field, of course. Uh, Togekiss is exceptionally low on health, but I, you know there's no spread moves available for Rillaboom, and it should be pretty easy to tidy this up if, if you're Felix. Well, I mean, you can see the timer flash up there as well. There is not a lot of time left in this game one. And that's the thing. We are still in game one of this set at the moment. There's still everything to play for, but the amount of defensive plays and switching that's been done by Felix here has been extraordinary. And it's enabled to put him in this phenomenal end game situation. You know, the Rillaboom not known for having spread moves in this situation. Um, Togekiss, if it's got something like um, Air Slash will be able to deal some big damage, but instead just goes for some redirection, leaves Dragapult in the position to be able to pick up the KO as Rillaboom does go for that Grassy Glide. Picks up the KO against Togekiss, but I think Dragapult's going to be able to seal it here for Felix. Yeah, all Dragapult needs to do is, is launch, uh, you know, a couple of attacks. I say a couple because it's the Dragon Darts that we see. It's actually <laughs> two Dreepy that fire out, and, and that's going to be enough to, to take the game. What a slog that one is. I mean, let's be honest, that is not... The, the most high octane game that we've seen. Uh, it's not really one that we see all the time in, in this format. And I think with a lot of teams becoming more aggressive and, and learning their way around the format in that regard, uh, certainly interesting to see them play a game that's a lot more about switching on board position. Yeah, exactly. Like at the beginning of formats, hyper offense is everywhere. And it's actually quite refreshing to see a team that comes in and has more defensive plays. And it's a slightly different way of playing Pokemon at the minute. But I think there's a jinx between you and I, Adam. Every time we take the deaths, we always get these games that go down to the wire with the clock really ticking along. And that's where we saw this game one going. So it's going to be interesting if throughout the rest of the set, if Flavio is able to come back, maybe try and go on a more offensive route um, and try and pick up these KOs, try and remove that pesky Incineroar from play before he can really start putting in work against his team without even clicking moves, you know, just by appearing on the field that causes problems for Flavio. But at the same time, if you're Felix, are you going to stick with that strategy? It worked really well for him, but it did rely on making those split decisions that were pivotal, you know, making sure that you call the right switch and you call the right targeting um, so that you always put Flavio on edge while he's playing. And that's something that's really difficult to do and the pressure of doing that can build up throughout a set. So whether Felix can keep a cool head and stick with that or maybe switch things up, we'll have to see. Yeah, I think something's got to change from, from Flavio here. I, I really don't like how easy he was to, to get put under the thumb and, and really play from behind because of that Incineroar, I think. <laughs> Relying on the Cinderace was, was an issue. Um, you know, the Rillaboom and the Urshifu kind of struggled a little bit with those Intimidates too. And it, it's just something he's got to find an adaptation for. I'd, I'd love to see Toxtricity come in here. Um, I think to Toxtricity, you know, th that combination of, of Togekiss and, and Excadrill, at least to be able to fire back a little bit easier, I think. And I'm not sure if this Drift Blim did as much as, as maybe some of the other choices on his teams. Yes, I, I do like the combination of Grassy Seed and the Seed and the, the boost. And it's cool, I'm not denying that, but um, you know, I, I just think then there needed to be a change and relying on Hypnosis, that was probably not the one. Hmm. Uh, so it does look like he's changed it. We did get to see team preview and I, I think that could be big for him in this matchup. Yeah, the first hypnosis was very exciting, being able to get that onto the Togekiss, but then after that, it did fall short of the expectations Flavio had of it, and he really needed to be able to connect those, moves, connect those moves accurately. Felix, however, going for the same leads as he did in game one, the Amoongus and the Togekiss, so having that redirection and double sleep potential is something that Flavio has to concern himself with, and I think it's quite wise bringing in the Tyranitar here and the Cinderace, both Pokemon that can apply a lot of pressure um, to that Togekiss, <laughs> but they do still have to watch out for that Amoongus. Yeah, and I, I kind of like this this change up from from Flavio. I think Tyranitar's big, and I think spread moves in, port, in general would just be big against uh, a team like Flavio's. With the double redirector, you don't know which one's going to pull it. Hey, guaranteed damage on both with a rock slide, right? There's no mm -hmm. issue with that. It's not like it pulls all of the rocks over to, to one side of the field. So, yeah. you know, the combination of rock slide in front of this double redirect option, really cool. And a really good adaptation. Uh, certainly something I prefer to this 
this Driftland strategy that we saw in game number one. So a good change up, I think. Uh, obviously, Togekiss and Amoongus are very defensive, very well paired off, and uh, certainly able to, to try and find an opening and, and get Felix into the game. Well, Felix going to go straight for what he did best in game one, switching in that Incineroar in place of the Togekiss. So getting off a critical Intimidate against both of these physical attackers is relaying to the strategy he had in game one. Amoongus could potentially be vulnerable here. if this, I'm, I didn't actually clock what Flavio was doing. I always try and keep myself surprised as best I can. Uh, but Flavio, if he is going for the Dynamax on that Cinderace, could be able to go for something like a Max Airstream um, into the opposing... Amoongus there, or even go um, for the fire type moves and just try and pick up some big damage and remove that from play. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think Dynamite in the Cinderace is, is key here, uh, just to be able to get as much damage down as possible. There's going to be the Protect from Amoongus, so pretty smart, um, but we'll see exactly how much it decides to take. Uh, once again, uh, not ideal on my Italian, but Dynajet sounds like a Max Airstream to me. We'll see confirmation <laughs> with the animation and the Cobra Berry. Being in yeah. there as well. So Amoongus takes a little bit of damage, but that's actually pretty good for Flavio. He gets to force the Amoongus to eat its berry on a turn it was protecting anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. So the next turn would be pretty easy uh, to, to try and kind of deal with that. Yeah, really nice here. So the Tyranitar, I think, has gone for a rock slide here. Uh, yep. We'll obviously connect onto the Protect of the Amoongus, but do some really good damage despite the Intimidate to that Incineroar, uh, particularly with the Sand damage that's going to be inflicted. That is going to be a two-hit KO against that Incineroar. Although, actually, I didn't see any Sand come on that Incineroar. Nope, uh, looking to be like the safety goggles variety mm. there, making sure it's safe from the Sand. But, you know, the, it should get there. You'd, you'd like to think it's going to be close for the rock slide. Um, of course, the Amoongus now certainly a little bit of danger. Um, this is one of those opportunities where Flavio's got to really get the damage down with that, uh, <laughs> you know, with his combination of Pokemon on the field. Um, you know, the Cinderace needs to land something big on the Amoongus. That's mm -hmm. going to be really important for him. And, you know, if he's doing that, I think the Tyranitar selection actually helps out so much here because the Tyranitar is able to then just say, Okay, well, I'm just going to keep rock sliding, so whether it's Incineroar and Togekiss, I'm going to get damage down, and big damage at that too. Um, mm -hmm. And that just keeps the pressure up. Yeah, well, Felix, once again, going for some switches, but he needs to be able to... He, he's working around these max moves um, from the, the Cinderace, but he needs to be able to also deal out some damage. Stops the Tyranitar in his tracks as Togekiss joins the field, and Libero going to activate once again um looks like it's going straight into what was the Amoonga slot here but actually going to go into that token because still does a solid chunk of damage almost 50 percent um just showing the sheer power of this cinderace yep cinderace getting good damage down and i think uh you know the incineroar was forced to fake out the tyranitar but the problem is it, it doesn't really deal with the problem this turn right it mm -hmm. it's kind of just still there um and if everything goes off in the right order here this could be a huge turn for flavio we saw him hovering uh, the Max Knuckle uh, into whatever slot he wants really on, on this right now. I think he just, the key thing for him is getting the attack boost on yeah. both his Pokemon to, to deal with that Intimidate. And then, you know, assuming he lands something like the the Rock Slide on both, he'll be in a great position. And, and uh, you know, it's a lot easier to do with maybe one drop than the multiple drops that he was dealing with in the last game. Yeah, well, it looks like we're changing up again, this time going for the Max Knuckle. Um, but going to be caught onto the Togekiss, once again, not dealing very much damage at all, but will critically be able to get the attack boost, and that's something that Flavio does need to do to start countering some of those Intimidates that are coming out from the Incineroar. But really well played here by Felix to really nullify the damage output from this Cinderace and its max turns. Togekiss will fall victim to a rock slide though. No longer gonna be available for switching potential there for Felix. Um, as the sand does go around to start um, KOing a little bit of damage um, against these Pokemon. But the one thing I really like about the Gigantamax Cinderace is going for that G-Max Fireball um, into the Amoongus previously would have dealt really good damage, but also critically doesn't change the weather, meaning that Tyranitar is able to stay in the sand and keep that special defense boost. Yeah, and that, that's going to help out a lot, I think, if uh, you know, he needs to watch out for attacks from this Amoongus, which we, we saw in game number one, it's definitely a little more offensive than the traditional Amoongus, so uh, certainly something that's going to help out with Tyranitar, and the Tyranitar now uh, looks very happy with the way that Felix's team selection has fallen for him. All he needs mm -hmm. to do is deal with that Amoongus, and then he's going to be in a good position to start hitting the Dragapult, the Incineroar, for, for super effective damage, so uh, a lot going on, I think. Um, you know, the longer this game goes, the more Italian we get to learn, so that's always good news that's for true. us, Lou. Um, 
yeah, secondary really effect. To, to, to brush up. This is probably one of the slower games though I've seen in in this new Series 5 format. And, and Felix, I think, is showing off why this kind of core that a lot of people talk about mm. has just got even better with the addition of Amoongus. Yeah, Amoongus definitely has been a good introduction for the Isle of Armour. You know, it's a blast from the past for many players, but it still is just as relevant in this current format with the redirection and also a lot of people running that kind of turbo Amoongus where it's super fast um, that can really catch a few people off guard. But Felix, once again, keeping his Dynamax for a little later in the game, making sure that Flavio has utilized his turns and Felix wants to be able to make the biggest potential possible out of his turns indeed um, on that Dragapult. Amoongus, once again, just going to go for the Protect, doesn't want to take a Pyro Ball um, from this Cinderace. But it looks like, ooh, I'm not sure, but the iron word head. metal, I, that's where I was going. It's got the word metal, it's probably Iron mm -hmm. Head going into that Dragapult, um, but doing a little bit of KO, of course, thanks to the um, Life Orb. Dynajet, we have learned, means Max Airstream. Going to go into that Cinderace, but not enough to pick up the KO, although Sand, I think, will follow up. Yeah, I, th I think that's going to be the, the end of Cinderace, but, you know, that's better value, and I think that change over to... Oh no, it won't take sand damage, it's a steel type now, thanks to Libero. Oh, of course! Um, mm. So, that's really good to know, is, is that's probably something he's trying to use to keep him around. Uh, this Dragapult took a lot of damage from the, the rock slide there. Um, that's that's certainly not going anywhere, of course, Amoongus protecting itself. Uh, but most importantly, I mean, the Dragapult gets a max airstream down, uh, and that, I think, means it, it's just trying to catch up, it's trying to deal with that earlier, uh, you know, Dynamax turn one airstream from the Cinderace. Yeah, exactly. Trying to get the speed advantage on his side. And to be honest, if you can get enough Max Airstreams to get that Amoongus into a place of speed, it can be pretty threatening with very fast spores. Or as we saw previously, the Sludge Bomb did so much damage to Rillaboom. And if Flavio's got that in the back, which I think he does, that could be a potential problem that Flavio will have to deal with. Because, you know, the Grassy Guides, although they're great and they've got priority, Amoongus isn't going to be too worried about them at all. And if it can retaliate with something like the Sludge Bomb, that gives Flavio a little bit of trouble that he has to deal with. But once again, we see the clock really, really ticking down on these turns the players thinking about all the possible options they've got as Dragapult goes for that max wormwind into the cinderace easily manages to pick up the ko and critically will be reducing the attack of that tyranitar by one stage as well this could be quite interesting if tyranitar has gone for something like the lash out where you get the benefit of having a stat reduced um but no, that, I, that looks like rock slide once again um we'll pick up the ko against Dragapult. that's great but amunga still to move i wonder if it'll flinch due to that rock slide Yep, that one's in my uh, vocabulary now, is is that rock slide. Uh, very <laughs> easy to kind of spot when you see it, you're like, I mean, A, the animation hits both, that definitely helps me out. Uh, <laughs> but it's the only it's the only rock type move on his team, so... Uh... Yeah, um, rock slide is pretty much a staple on Tyranitar, but it looked like Amoongus actually did flinch, was unable to move. Yeah, that certainly helps as well, as it's not being put to sleep or, or anything of that nature. Um, and this does actually bring us to, to just Incineroar and Amoongus, a combination that's not the most offensive, uh, certainly not the, the easiest to, to play around uh, for getting that big damage down. The grassy terrain's in play, so that might help out the Amoongus here. Uh, but that's going to be the final time you can intimidate, it, you know, it's going to be the, the final time you can uh, really apply pressure. And I, I just don't see much of a way that, that Felix can, mm -hmm. can get back into this reliably. You know, he doesn't have the access to switch out with Amoongus and get Regenerator anymore. He doesn't have the access to to deal with with a lot, and uh, you know it looks like Flavio is just going to play the smart with fake outs. Oh, fake outs getting exchanged from both players. We're just going to uh, do nothing else this turn. Yeah, just go for some fake outs, bit of chip damage. But I think the problem with going for double fake out is you're not utilizing your partner Pokemon well at all. If Maybe he'd gone for the fake out. As you can see, the fake out went into the Amoongus there. Nothing's happening. The Incineroar going to the partner Pokemon. If Incineroar hadn't taken that fake out, maybe he'd gone for something like a Flare Blitz into that uh, Rillaboom. That could have been really good for Felix there. Maybe even got a burn or something like that just to kind of put him back in play because these rock slides coming out from the Tyranitar are so strong. You can see how much damage they do despite the Intimidate. Um, as Rillaboom goes for that taunt that was revealed in game one. Really nice pick there on Rillaboom. Not something I've seen often, uh, but it does just shut down this Amoongus entirely. Incineroar is going to go for the Flare Blitz in this turn. You can see how much damage that does. Uh, would have been really nice to see it. I've gone for that in the first one, but uh, will fall victim to its own recoil and Amoongus might be a tough little mushroom but I'm not sure what it's going to be able to do against this Tyranitar. Yes, it could pick up a KO against Rillaboom but I think Tyranitar, as long as it can hit those rock slides or maybe wants to switch it up to a more accurate move, will be able to take game two for Flavio. Yep, and uh, nothing coming out there from the Amoongus. We saw the top <laughs> and the spore fail, uh, so nothing too exciting there and maybe we'll get to see something 
something new from this Tyranitar. We haven't seen anything uh, else from it. Curious to note, no protect on there. Two dark moves, a fighting move, and of course the rock slide that we've seen. So uh, certainly a, a different move set for the Tyranitar. And the Tyranitar actually took no real damage in that game. Mm. Uh, wasn't concerned at all. And, and that's something I think, you know, Felix is going to have to look at and say, all right, well, I can't just let you sit there and, and do exactly what you want again. So he's going to have to find an adaptation to deal with that. But I think in team preview, the change to Tyranitar was, mm -hmm. was essential and, and so well thought through by Flavio. Yeah, Tyranata still put in so much work against Felix's team, despite taking that Intimidate quite early on. The rock slides were accurate, which always helps out. Um, but being able to target down the Togekiss for really good damage, and as well, the damage it was dealing out to that Dragapult turned out to be really critical when it got into its Dynamax form, you know, paired up with the Iron Head. Dragapult wasn't going to hang around for too long, and although it was able to pick up some KOs, it doesn't have access to that Dragon Darts when it's in its Dynamax form, so it can only use single target moves. And I think that actually worked a little bit against Felix, because when it was up against that Tyranitar that could still hit the Rock Slides, Flavio was still constantly able to deal damage throughout all of those turns. Yep, I think that that's the key thing, is, you know, this core that, that Felix was relying on and switched around so effectively in game one, just didn't work in game two and i think he's gonna have to dig into the team and find something a little bit new i do think the four pokemon he selected is a little bit low on the damage output as well i mean togekiss is oh, dragapult's number one in, in how much damage it deals togekiss spray comes in second with incineroar third and, and fourth is you know way back the amoongus in the damage chart so a little bit concerning to see it not able to do more damage and i think if tyranitar's coming Maybe you have to play around the Excadrill a little bit more there and, and see if you can find a place for that to come in or even the Rotom as well. So I, I think now the onus is on Felix to, to make that change to force, you know, something a little bit different in this game. I mean, something that does now really fall into place is the item choice on that Tyranitar. You mentioned it didn't have Protect. We didn't see it go for anything else other than Rock Slides and still dealt out big damage. Um, it looks like the item choice on there does help it out quite a lot, boosting up its attack stat. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see if Flavio wants to lead with it again or maybe keep it in the back for later. Maybe if he's able to deal with that Incineroar early on and bring it out and do that really powerful damage. But I think it is his best answer to the Incineroar. And that's definitely the Pokemon choice for Felix that causes the most problems um, for Flavio. Um, oh, seconds ticking down. He managed to lock it in just in time. We're going into a game three, Adam. Yeah, and I think this game three is going to have, uh, it's got to have some changes from Felix for me. Otherwise, it, it's not going to be the, the easiest game for him to get through. So uh, we'll see what adaptations he made. We did see some changes there from Flavio, uh, kind of last minute to see what he could do. But overall, um, you know, I think a lot has been in in Flavio's favor in the, mm -hmm. the last game that he can bring into to game number two. Uh, there's one of them. That's Tyranitar, and that's going to be a really bad sign for both the Pokemon on <laughs> Felix's side of the field, right? Like the Togekiss and the Cineroar, both weak to Rock Slide. We know from our view, it's a choice banded Rock Slide. It's going to mm -hmm. hurt, and he's just... It's got to switch. I mean, either that or he's got to fake it out and, and let the Cinderace just do what it wants for a minute. I mean, this is the thing. Tyranitar can go for that rock side, and if you're Felix, you just have to be crossing your fingers that it misses and that you're able to do something with either Pokemon. Um, of course, the Incineroar can go, like you said, for that fake out. Um, maybe try and get some good damage off with, like, a Dazzling Gleam into... Um, both of the Pokemon on Flavio's side, but I think Togekiss might try and go for some of that sleep if it gets the opportunity to. I think it might have to. I think it's going to have to... Uh, try and open things up there and, and maybe you know Flavio doesn't have a choice right we know it's the choice band you kind of just have to go for it and hope you get given that opportunity um, but you know if he does that uh, there's going to be some some time for the Cinderace to do exactly what it wants the Cinderace didn't decide to go for the the Dynamax this turn uh, that's going to be a high jump kick and we saw uh, how much damage it can do and Cinderace taking so so low in a rock slide easily going to be able to take that that out uh, but there's a the follow up yawn and uh yo the togekiss is uh you know getting getting stuff to sleep but it's not dealing with that tyranitar for the next turn yeah exactly high jump kick connecting onto the incineroar not able to pick up the ko but dealing like you said on really critical damage rock slide will easily be able to ko it but i wonder if felix will want to keep it around he, we know how useful it is for him in his strategy of using intimidate lowering the attack on flavio's side so this could be the opportunity to switch something in for that incineroar and if you're flavio are you going to be able to try and call that I, I absolutely cannot see this Incineroar staying on the field this turn, purely because 
Felix has played so well around keeping it for later, making sure things are constantly intimidated. So there it is, leaving the field. And he's not just going to give it up to a rock slide, right? And, and let it mm. fall down to that. Uh, Stan Mungus, uh, a much kind of more positive selection there. Uh, but he's going to take damage on the uh, on the way in, and Tokus avoiding the rock slide. That's absolutely huge for Felix, I think. Yeah, Tyranitar getting tired from this long set, avoids the Togekiss, will take a yawn um, from Togekiss in this situation. So Tyranitar very possibly maybe switching out um, at the end of this turn to stop that yawn from going into effect. I like the change up here though from Flavio with that Toxtricity. It can still apply a lot of pressure to Togekiss with electric type moves. Um, Amoongus, not so much, but you can still deal a really big chunk of damage to it. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if Toxtricity is going to be maybe a Gigantamax Pokemon of choice here for Flavio. Yep, I think this Toxtricity is a really a, a nifty addition. I think it's another Pokemon that obviously brings spread moves that, that can can really help out there. Um, we did see that it's another one of those Pokemon that can carry Taunt as well, and I think that could just put so much pressure down on the Amoongus, um, because it, it naturally, just by its presence in typing, pressures the Togekiss as well. So, a, a lot of good things coming out of this change, uh, but Felix is, is making a, a real hard job of it for Flavio by constantly making him switch this yawn that he hasn't been able to find mm -hmm. an answer to yet. Really problematic. Yeah, if you're Flavio right now, you need to get rid of this Togekiss as quickly as possible because it is just causing a few problems for him. He has to play defensively and that's matched up against the defensive plays there of Felix as well, bringing Incineroar back in once again. Going to intimidate the Cinderace here. As Toxtricity goes actually for that taunt, so you can see the little nuggets of taunt going through Flavio's team here, having it on his really boom and also on that Toxtricity. But Incineroar playing the games that it's been playing all set, comes in and stops Amoongus taking that taunt is something that Incineroar is not going to worry about. As Togekiss gets that yawn off as well so in all honesty at the minute felix is just in such a commanding position he now has fake out and can yawn again he can yawn into that toxtricity slot thinking there's going to be a switch or yawn into the cinderace he's got all the options right now yeah and i, I think that might be a slight misplay there from from flavio i mean I, I don't know how much felix knows about this this toxtricity and the fact it has taunt but as soon as he makes that switch i mean that toxtricity is just in such a bad position right now you know it's probably going to get faked out the Cinderace is probably going to get Yawn for its troubles as well, so uh, this could get really nasty and Felix showing a strategy that we've seen a few times already is, you know, Yawn and, and forcing your opponent to switch means they're just not allowed to play the game and that's a huge issue for them. Yeah, with Tyranitar jumping back into the fray here, once again against a Togekiss and Incineroar, so those rock slides will be hurting, but uh, only for about two seconds, because Incineroar leaves the field and Dragapult will resume its position here on the field. Um, of course, that Cinderace could potentially be taking some damage from, oh, not some damage, taking some sleep, but in return, we'll do some damage with the Iron Head. Um, going into the Dragapult here, actually, um, interestingly, that wasn't targeting into the Togekiss. That would have been, um, I think, a better option here, just trying to remove it from the field. Dazzling Gleam, not dealing too much damage and of course being a non-weakness policy Tyranitar that's something Felix doesn't have to worry about too much. I think however for Felix though the Dazzling Gleam it it hasn't done the amount of work that's kind of been sacrificed from not using the Yawn. Yep I, I think that's that's strange to give up that kind of pseudo lock uh, that we mm. talk about right I mean you knew that something was leaving you had access to fake out it's very strange uh, for him to, to immediately be like, oh, well, I'm now going to Dazzling Gleam. And maybe he just wanted to do damage. Maybe he feels like this is the time where he needs to mix it up and, and break that down. So it'll be interesting to, to see if that, that's worth it in the long run for mm. him. It's good damage down on the Tyranitar, and that's more damage than he did to Tyranitar in the previous game. Uh, but interesting to see. Uh, looks like we may get a, a new Dynamax from, from Flavio in this game. Yeah, Flavio locking in his moves very, very quickly there, coming down once again to the last second. Goes for another switch, Toxtricity going to rejoin the field here and of course apply a lot of pressure to that Togekiss. But first of all, it's going to be the Dynamax on Felix's side. He has got that Dragapult in nice and safely. Um, has, you know, taken the Iron Head damage, but I think still is in a good enough position to be in the Dynamax position and start firing off some powerful Max Wormwind and reducing the attack on Flavio's side. That's really been his solid strategy so far. And it has worked out for him, so I wonder if, with this depleted Dragapult, if he's still going to be able to carry that momentum through as the Dynamax happens on Flavio's side. Yep, the, the Dynamax coming through, something that we saw from our view, uh, being able to, to get that's our Anatar to stick around a little bit longer, I think is going to be key. Kind of annoying that you can't rock slide with it. Um, mm. There's no spread max move, so... Probably uh, a little more demanding on the targeting here, but um, it certainly helps out. And there's the 
So that's the follow me coming through. So that could be uh, really helpful for this Dragapult. Yeah, Togekiss helping out Dragapult, which goes for that Max Wormwind into the Tyranitar. Tyranitar able to hang on, no more offensive moves coming out from Felix this turn. So Tyranitar will be in prime position to go for something like a Max Rockfall and try and rid Flavio of this Togekiss once and for all in this set. Um, actually, yeah, it does look like it is going to be that Max Rockfall. My Italian is improving, like we said, Adam, with every turn. But Togekiss able to hang on, actually, um, depending on what this toxicity has gone for in the follow-up. Um, this could be super interesting, and I think as well, losing the sand in that particular turn now leaves Tyranitar a lot more vulnerable to something like a Dazzling Gleam, but I wonder if Toxtricity is going to be able to follow up in this next turn and KO that Togekiss. Yeah, I think it has to, right? I mean, this Tyranitar's kind of doomed at this point. Uh, there's nothing it can do to stop the Dragapult knocking it out. The Dragapult really has its choice of whatever Max moves it wants to use, um, and that's something that, you know, is it maybe the downfall of this choice ban Tyranitar is. Hey, you get the choice band, then that's great for your rock slides early on. But um, the issue there is when, when you become a max Pokemon, you're one of the very few that doesn't have access to max guard. And as soon as they know to take advantage of that, and I'm sure that's something that Felix has figured out just by the damage that's been dealt. Uh, he knows that he's always just going to be able to target down the Tyranitar with the Dragapult and uh, be able to, to get those knockouts and, and get what, you know, after that, he gets one more turn of Dynamax as well for himself. So, uh, you know, another max Wormwind. Not a chance for Tyranitar here. Yeah, going straight into that Tyranitar, being choice bound variant, didn't have any status moves um, to allow it to go for a max guard, so it was sitting very vulnerable, and Flavio will lose his Dynamax after only one turn of damage, um, which could be slightly demotivating for him in this situation. Toxtricity, though, going for that overdrive. Amoogle's having joined the field means Togekiss has been protected and still in the back there, um, and doesn't manage to pick up any KOs. Toxtricity not being able to deal out the offensive power that it needs to, and Amoongus is a really good answer for this Pokemon, actually, because it's going to resist those moves. It's not going to be able to be KO'd by anything Toxtricity is really throwing at it, and Dragapult's going to have to be the target um, from that choice. But Urshifu coming in with those Wicked Blows, landing some critical hits, that's something that both these Pokemon have to worry about on Felix's side. I think what's going to be a problem here is is looking at it, it's, it's this Incineroar, right? And I, mm. you know... <laughs> It, he saved it so well in game one. He's putting himself in the exact same position in game two, where he's just going to be able to land intimidates on on both Urshifu, which obviously doesn't mind about them as much landing crits and, and such. But um, you know this this Cinderace, no Dynamax access either. It's, it's going to struggle, I think, if it gets put in front of the Incineroar. It's it's going to be really close, and that damage output is, is just going to be underwhelming. Of course, Urshifu has options to try and deal with this Dragapult now. I think that's something that's a definite positive for Flavio, but Felix, you know, is just not taking that much damage in this Amoongus. You know, what's he gonna do? Wear it down again and let it get regenerated to go in uh, once again? Who knows, with all the switches from Felix, anything is possible. Protect comes out on that Togekiss though, and Rage Powder um, coming out on the Amoongus, so wanting to redirect everything around so that Dragapult is going to be able to survive out this turn. Goes for the Max Phantasm into the Toxtricity though, so lowering the defense of both of these Pokemon. And I think that works out well for the Toxtricity later on. Um, the physical attackers on Felix's side will be able to pick up KOs against it as long as it stays on the field and keeps that drop, of course. Urshifu, however, going to go for that Wicked Blow straight into that Amoonga slot, of course, going to break through the Protect thanks to the Unseen Fist ability and does so much damage. So Amoonga's looking really vulnerable, Dragapult looking vulnerable, and if I remember correctly, the Togekiss, and I'm not sure about the Incineroar, but the Togekiss definitely is not healthy in the back for Felix. Yeah, and this Amoongus, I mean, is, is being asked quite a lot right now, really, you know, to, to be able to say, well, you know, we got to, you got to redirect all these attacks away. Um, the Ashifu is going to cause a problem, I think. The, the Wicked Blow, as we saw there, doing a whole lot mm. of the Rage Powder, guaranteeing that landed, and it, there's obviously the... The Amoongus is being forced into certain decisions it might not want to make just because of, mm -hmm. um, you know, threats of something like Sucker Punch and, and going mm -hmm. around from there. Has to yeah, be no, so I, careful. Yeah, and I totally forgot the Amoongus had Ray Powder, not Protect. That was the Toxtricity. Um, it's definitely been a long set, Adam. We're, we're getting to the sort of nitty end of it here. Rage Powder once again coming out there from that Amoongus, going to draw in all the attacks once again and protect Dragapult from those Dark Type moves. Um, as Dragapult goes, fires out the Dreepies. Finally having access to its spread moves once again, breaking the sash on the Earth should be most critically, but not being able to pick up a KO against that Cinderace. And it looks like Dragapult's really only got one move available um, with that recoil damage on from the life orb. Amoongus, however, will fall victim to that wicked blow once again. So 
Dragapult not going to have that redirection and potential um, going into this next turn. And Felix's Pokemon, that health, really is being depleted. And with each Pokemon being KO'd, he loses that switch switching maneuverability. Yep, and I think the big issue here is, you know, if you bring the Togekiss in now when there's no Toxtricity, then mm. it, it can redirect and it can help out the Dragapult. But if, it, if you leave it in the back, you bring it in Cineroar, you're, you're probably just going to get close combated or, or any fighting move really, we should be able to do it. And, uh, this, even though uh, Flavio is taking a lot of damage, I think just by the nature of his pairing now, um, if you bring in Incineroar as well, there's nothing to really stop those sucker punches coming through mm -hmm. from the the Urshifu. So the Urshifu just checks the Dragapult and, you know, the, the Cinderace should be able to comfortably deal with the, the Togekiss. Yeah, that's the thing. It, the health here really is just not working out for Felix. Like, even if Dragapult wants to go for the Protect and burn out the Sucker Punch, um, meaning that it's more exposed to something like a Dazzling Team from the Togekiss, Cinderace could, you know, it doesn't have to go for um, anything risky at this situation. It could just go for an Iron Head straight into that Togekiss and pick up the KO. Even an Incineroar jumping into the fray won't be enough to deplete the physical like output from that enough to, to save Togekiss in this situation. So. Um, definitely looks to be a lot stronger here for Flavio. He has all that offensive pressure. He also has the speed potential with Cinderace and Sucker Punch having that priority. Um, I'm not too sure what Felix can do here. Even if he switches around, it's still going to be the same two Pokemon he's facing against. Yep, and this is uh, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, that Togekiss is really going to struggle to to do enough uh, in the last few turns, particularly if the Dragapult gets knocked out. I like this play. I like this uh, Shifu playing it safe getting that protect down and, and yeah there's the follow me so i think uh, he's just trying to wait for that tokus to be guaranteed gone actually yeah that works out really well but cinderace will be ko'd by the droopy that's come out from dragapult here um of course the life will recoil though coming out from that will be enough to finish off the dragapult so actually really nice play there by flavio going for the protect knowing the dragapult will sort itself out in this situation and even though he will lose his partner pokemon um, it does give him the opportunity to bring in that Toxtricity, a Pokemon that doesn't really care too much um, about this Intimidate and can really apply a load of pressure against that Tobikus. Yeah, the the really nice decision making earlier in the game coming back to pay off for Flavio here, right? Mm -hmm. We saw him switch out the Toxtricity when it was still healthy. And that seemed weird, right? You were like, oh, well, it can still do damage. It's still in a good position. Uh, but right now, most importantly, it brings a solid spread move. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, in Overdrive, it's something that is going to be very difficult to play around, especially with this Togekiss and this and also so low. I mean, you can only fake out one thing, right? And the other thing, um, whatever you don't fake out, you know, even if you faked out the Toxtricity to avoid the spread from, from Overdrive, uh, I'd still imagine that this uh, Shifu is going to be able to pick up a knockout somewhere along the way, mm -hmm. right? Or at the very least, apply enough pressure with Sucker Punch for, for it not to get knocked out in return. So, uh, Incineroar does fake out Toxtricity, uh, not the worst decision in the world, uh, but Urshifu, there we go, wicked blow. Uh, just making sure that this Togekiss isn't given the chance to, to move, and, you know, the next turn it should wrap it up for, for Flavio. Exactly, I mean, what an amazing stonk of a set that's gone on through here, and particularly in this game three as well, you know, Flavio losing his Dynamax so early, and Dynamaxing a choice band Pokemon, or any choice Pokemon, isn't always the most optimal, uh, because you don't get the benefit of those items when you're in that Dynamax form, but it actually really managed to work out for him, getting the Togekiss down to such low HP, and he could also potentially have picked up the KO 